So why? Why should you be a first generation cash flow millionaire? Honestly, have you thought about it? Outside of the obvious reasons, why put in all the hard work, the long nights, the evenings, the weekends, the sacrifices? Because I want you to win in life. I would hope that you would never want to worry about money ever again. So in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad, I'm going to cover seven reasons why you should become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. Who's cracking everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here. Hail to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois. Here at the Money Smart Movement headquarters, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And as promised, we'll be covering seven reasons why you should become a seven-figure income earner and cash flow millionaire. You see, I've done countless videos on how. How to flip your stimulus check into millions, how to build a million dollar business, and even how to make a million dollars through life insurance. But I noticed something. There's a reason why people pursue their financial goals and at least going to seven figure type of income. There are trends. A lot of people get excited about their new decision. I mean, at the shooting of this video, it's the end of the first quarter of 2021. And you know what everybody's doing at the beginning of this year? New Year's resolutions. You see, a lot of people can get off to a very quick start, a great month, a great quarter, even a great year. And then what? A lot of them will eventually stop. Why? Because they forget why they're doing this in the first place. So let's let this video be a reminder to you why you should become a first generation cash flow millionaire. So let's get right into it. Number one, which is the obvious, financial freedom. You know, oftentimes people say, man, I want financial freedom, financial freedom, financial freedom. I get it. And so we ask people to do the math. What type of income do you need to make on a monthly basis, on a yearly basis, in order for you to not have to worry about money? Oftentimes, people never have a number. But once they do, boom, it's locked in. Now they're dialed in. Now they know what they need to do and the formula to get there. Imagine living a life where you have zero financial pressure on your shoulders. I mean, I remember there was a time where I was a single father. And all the time, I'd never want to pick up my phone. Do you know why? I think many of you suspect why. I was afraid of bill collectors calling me. Every other call was no call ID, no call ID, no call ID. You know why? Because my life was a financial mess. But imagine you can start living a life where you have financial freedom. You don't have to worry about bills. You can go to the grocery store. You can fill up the grocery cart, fill up all, with, go to Whole Foods, fill up with all that you want to eat, to consume, to enjoy, to indulge in. You don't have to worry about what it would cost. You don't have to worry about going to Whole Paycheck or Whole Foods, as some people call it, Whole Paycheck, Whole Foods. You don't have to worry about what the cost of foods are. You eat based on what you perceive as best for your health, not based on the sticker or how much it necessarily costs. You see, becoming financially free, you lose yourself out of the boundaries that are conventionally set upon you by other people. You want to know a personal story? Here's a personal story. So one time, I uh, was taking my kids to church. And uh, at the time, I didn't have a car, so we took the bus and we took the train. And by the time we got off the train, it was still another mile walk to church from the train station. And it was in the middle of the dead winter. And it was cold outside. And we're walking outside, and next thing you know, my daughter says, Poppy, I'm cold. And I look at her, she doesn't have her gloves on. I said, didn't I remind you before we left the house to get your gloves on? And the other kid's, Poppy, I'm cold. The other one says, Poppy, I'm hungry. I'm like, fine, let's get inside and let's get something to eat. So we go inside at Jimmy John's, okay? Go inside at Jimmy John's. We're warming back up, and we're looking up. I said, okay, the Jimmy John's, okay, I looked at number Tom Tom, number 12, blah, 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 I'm cool. Okay, package meal. I'm thinking to myself, man, I hope I have enough money on my credit card to charge it. I'm sitting here ordering. I said, let me just get the number 12 and let me get the chips, but no drink. Give me a cup of water. Couldn't afford in my mind the whole entire meal. And uh, I'm sending prayers at this moment to heaven. I said, Lord, answer my prayer. Let me just run this credit card. Please let it go through. And I'm sitting there wondering if it'll go through. And the guy runs a card, and he's holding the card. I remember him holding the card. You know how they slide it through? And they're like, okay, here you go. I'm like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right? He hands me back the card. I take the card back. I get the plate of food. We sit down. I remember sitting there with my kids. They're warm, warm back up again. And I remember taking a bite of the sandwich, splitting the sandwich up in two pieces, giving it to my children to eat. I'm looking at them. I said, you know what? This is the last time I will ever worry about food, about money, about how to take care of my family ever again. 
It's the last time it's going to happen. You see, oftentimes, situations like that are painful. And unless you feel great pain or you, unless you feel pain in a certain type of situation, it's only then that you decide to make some form of great change. So if you never want to face that type of situation like I experienced, well, then you, my friend, have a reason to become a millionaire. So therefore, you can become financially free. All right, number two, how about creating change and helping others? Imagine not only making a lot of money, but you're contributing to things that you believe in. And I'm talking outside of just your immediate family, but things that you believe in that you want to be a part of. At this point, we're talking about community change. You have a voice in your community amongst your peers now because you have finances to say, you know what? I got access to these type of conversations and I have access to these type of people. You have money to fund community centers, to funding projects, and even finding ways to influence policy. And becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, you're able to maximize your potential and execute whatever purpose it is that you stand for. I'll give you an example. You know, my sister, uh, she is uh, involved in this anti-human trafficking uh, nonprofit called Slavery No More. She does a lot of work through the International Justice Mission. And every year, she says, Kuya, will you help me out? Kuya means older brother in Filipino. She says, Kuya, will you help me out with my fundraising? I said, absolutely, no problem. Not only do I help post her links on social media, not only do I send her links to people that I know would fund her nonprofit uh, to fight human trafficking, but also I'm able to send a sizable check to, in essence, make sure she reaches her fundraising goals. Also, in addition to that, my sister led me to some people that said, you know, Kuya, you should consider investing in this company. What's that company? It's called Uncle Nearest. Uncle Nearest right now is a fast growing whiskey company in the United States. They just sent me a pair of my custom chucks. Thank you, Uncle Nearest Whiskey. But I'm great to be part of an investor of the fastest growing whiskey company in the United States, which is funding really a story of Uncle Nearest Whiskey that a lot of people don't know about the relationship with Jack Daniels. And guess what? It's the only board in the United States of America that has a multicultural board for a liquor company and the only liquor company that has a black woman as a CEO. So I'm glad I can put my money where I can create change and help others. And I'm not the only kid that can do it. If I can do it, so can you. Number three, leaving a legacy. You know, uh, oftentimes people say, well, I'm going to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy. No, no, no. A lot of people are saying that in all good meaning terms and all good meaning, you know, spirit of what they say that. But sadly, when one passes away, based on financial resources or a lack of a plan in place, guess what you just leave? A memory. Do you just want to be a memory of a relative of somebody? For example, you, you ever see those, uh, those funeral um, things? In loving memory of? Okay, is that good enough for you? Or do you actually want to leave a financial legacy, creating a financial contribution to the advancements of your last name of people that are in your family? Think about this. When I'm talking about leaving a legacy, I'm talking about money. And what my wife and I did, we sat down with an attorney. Not only did we purchase life insurance policies, but we created a trust. And it will, we show some video here of us actually sitting down with an attorney to do so. And we made some decisions. And we said, listen, babe, uh, if something were to happen to me because we're a blended family, I want to make sure that the children that I had before I met you have this amount of money. So I want to make sure that my children have a relationship with my wife, their actually stepmother, who's now their trustee of the estate that dad left behind to avoid a lot of different arguments. So how do we do that? So we created a plan in terms of creating a trust and a will that we decided between my wife and I, we're just not an equal distribution family, we're an equal opportunity family. Meaning that for probably my kids, my great grandkids, my great great grandkids, I hope that you're still watching this on YouTube. See, I'm just not creating this video in 2021 just for people in 2021. You know the, the weird thing about me even saying this? I'm expecting my grandkids in 2041 to watch this video. <laughs> I'm expecting their great, great grandkids to watch this video in 2071. I'm expecting my great, great, great grandkids to be watching this at a turn of the century and our world becomes 2100 years old. Check this out. You're watching this video still. I don't know what happened to YouTube at that point, but some form of function or some type of documentation like this video, you're watching it. Why? Because I'm creating a legacy. And the reason why you're watching this happily because my trust is still funding my kids, my kids' kids, and my kids' kids' kids based on what we did in 2021. So if you want to get on the bandwagon and say, you know what, I want to leave a legacy, that's a reason why I want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Well, there it is. Leave a legacy for those you love and care about. Number four, get your time back. What am I talking about? Your time back. You know, by the way, let me do some quick math, okay? 
The average person, the average median household income in America is $62,000 per year household income, okay? Based on the U.S. Census. The crazy part, okay, based on what my wife and I have earned the last several years, is we've earned a little more $6.2 million, okay, over the last several, several years. So think about this real quick. For the average person, how long would it take for them to earn $6.2 million? Approximately 100 years. So you gotta ask yourself, do I wanna make $6.2 million in a 100 year period, or do I wanna do it in, the se in several years, three, four, five years? The choice is yours. So if you wanna make more money, consider and getting your time back so you can enjoy with those that you love and care about. I'll give you an example. Our son Jojo, hey Jojo, do you have any bad feelings about your mom and dad working so hard? And this is a clip of us having breakfast in Hawaii and we're having a discussion about hard work, about what he wanted to do when he grew up. Let's check this out. Look, look, look. Hey, if you're poor, you work very hard. You don't have time. If you're rich, you got a lot of time. That's my perspective. And his perspective. That was incredible. He said, if you're poor, you work really hard, you don't have time. But when you're rich, you have more time. Money also travels down the family. So even though we're gone all the time and we work hard, long hours, are you mad at us for doing that? No, I'm grateful. Okay, so number five, personal growth. Well, I'm talking about personal growth. You know, we're just having a conversation over lunch about guys having conversations with people that they grew up with. And these guys are having million dollar conversations and people that they grew up with are having 15, 20, $25 an hour conversations. And they're like this, man, listen, eagles can't hang out with crows. They're, ha they're starting to have a conversation fly at an altitude that crows cannot breathe at or even communicate at. So when you're thinking, you're thinking to yourself, hey, what do I mean by personal growth? Listen, my wife and I have committed to a lifestyle of always cracking open to find and discover the next best version of ourselves. Now, I'm not the most likable guy in the world. You can have fun with me, sure. We can hang out, sure, no problem. But there's also an in intense side to me. And for a lot of people, that's annoying. Do you know why? Because when you're around me, there's always gonna be pressure. There's always gonna be that tenacity for me to say, you know, if I'm surrounding myself with you, what are you doing to get yourself to the next level? Because that's gonna indirectly and directly force me to get to the next level. And I need to hang out with men and women just like that. And their wiring is just like that. Because you know why? Because I want to make sure that I am an example of my associations that people around me are rising up to the next level. So if you want to be in that type of environment, where people are always pushing the envelope, it's a good reason for you to want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire because you are committed to cracking open potential and always discovering the next best version of you. Next one, meet new people. What am I talking about? When, listen, I've been invited to a lot of weird parties ever since I started making $500,000 a year, $700,000 a year, now seven-figure type of income. You get invited to a lot of weird parties. We got invited to a lot of weird uh, uh, fundraising events, a lot of uh, weird uh, uh, holiday parties. The first time I've ever seen in my entire life a harp <laughs> and hors d'oeuvres because it's an interior designer type of Christmas party. Uh, my wife and I were invited to the brand new grand opening of Michael Jordan's new steakhouse. And guess who the special guest was? It was Michael Jordan, and for three hours, my wife were just sitting out back in his patio in his restaurant right here in Oakbrook Terrace, Illinois. I'm sorry, that's Oakbrook, Illinois. And for three hours, I was around there with the Chicago Bears of the 18, 1985 team, Otis Wilson, Richard Dent. I was there with Ahmad Rashad. I was there with uh, 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 Michael Baker. I was there with uh, just Michael's inner circle, his attorney from the Charlotte Hornets, having a cigar for three hours. Interesting, interesting conversation. Talk about meeting new people and personal growth, because Michael Jordan is very much still tapped into a massive amount of personal growth. We were able to surround ourselves with Tim Tebow, our last event in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. I've uh, been invited to the White House to meet uh, Joe Coy, um, Magic Johnson, uh, uh, meeting the late, great Kobe Bryant, having a conversation with him backstage of what type of person and Kobe Bryant feels comfortable doing business with him. The answer was shocking. Matter of fact, let's show a clip. Kobe Bryant, who do you feel comfortable doing business with? Let's check this out. Obsessions. He says, you can what? Man, God bless you, uh, Kobe Bryant, and your family. And uh, last but not least, Chris Gardner. You know, the pursuit of happiness. You know, having, having an opportunity to hang out with him and, and uh, be around him in terms of association. Imagine your kids 
hanging around other people and they have the same type of parents that are wired the same way because they want to crack open their potential. The kids are thinking higher, they're thinking differently. The association of your children amongst other children that are entrepreneurs and feeling and vibe in the same way because their folks are also uh, uh, raising their family and their standards to the next level. So if you want to meet new people that aspire to be the best version of them, it's another big and great reason for you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. And last but not least, I think it goes without saying, number seven, for you to achieve your dreams. See, sometimes there's that little voice in the back of your head that says, you know what, I want you to be a superstar, I want you to be an athlete, I want you to be a celebrity. See, the benefit of becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire is that you don't have to ignore it anymore. A couple weeks ago, I was on the PBD podcast. We were talking about whether kids should pursue their career or pursue their passion. Don't find your passion, go fund your passion. Because you know what the bottom line is? Sometimes, sadly, a lot of people's passion is usually a hobby that they liked and it never paid off. And if you have a certain amount of passion, it's going to acquire a lot of money. We need to find a source, especially if we weren't raised in wealthy families, especially if we weren't you know, blessed with an 800 credit score coming out of high school. If you just start from this position called scratch from nothing, uh, um, making less than minimum wage work, which is where I came from, you got to find certain ways to fund and finance your passions. And the coolest part about this conversation is Patrick loved collecting sports cards, sports trading cards. He's been collecting since he was 12 years old. And I was showing a few of my cards. I was happy with a Barry Bonds card, a Jason Tatum card. Uh, I think I picked up a, a Kevin Durant card and a couple other cards. But there's nothing in, in comparison to what Patrick Ben David rolled out in his kitchen table But some of the things he's collected over the years. You know, I talk about a Will Chamberlain card, 1938 Babe Ruth card, uh, cards that he purchased for several thousand dollars and that was worth over six figures. I mean, Patrick Ben David was on record for selling a Wayne Gretzky card, Wayne Gretzky cards, for over $2.1 million dollars because he found a way to finance and fund his passion. You know, uh, speaking of achieving your dreams, you know, one of the things that we celebrated over the last weekend was my parents' 50th wedding anniversary, their golden anniversary. And, uh, and I remember my, my mother talking about their wedding, which was in a ba the basement of a church. And uh, they were picked up in a Pontiac Bonneville. And 50 years later, I pick them up. My mother's all decked out. And I pick them up in my Rolls Royce. And they're in the back seat, and they're just kind of reflecting upon life. And here's a quick clip of what my dad was saying as we were driving along, but how he felt about the situation, how he felt about the moment, the 50 winning anniversary of him being picked up in a Rolls Royce. Let's check this out. Yeah. <laughs> What's that, baby? We saw this only in a dream. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, man. For giving us, thank you Lord, for giving us kids that are just so, uh, beyond description, <laughs> you know, that they have achieved their best version of them and they're still working on it. Yes. Yes. God, thank you for all things work together for good, for good. <laughs> but if I'm not, you're welcome. You're not <laughs> See, isn't that awesome? When I think about my parents, I think about the struggle, the journey, the sacrifice they had immigrating here from the Philippines and the type of loneliness and, and like, what am I going to do? How am I going to do this? How am I going to survive in a country where I don't even speak this language? I don't have much money in my pocket or any money in my pocket at all. And now here they are being driven by their son to their 50th wedding anniversary in a Rolls Royce with class like royalty as they should be treated. And so I know many of you have probably had some thoughts and ideas of how you would love to honor your parents, how you would love to honor those you love and care about. Whatever your dreams are, whether the selfish goals, emotional goals, stability goals, whether you want to purchase a big home, whether you want to retire your parents like my wife and I have, or you might make a major contribution to a organization that you feel strongly about or a cause that you feel strongly about, whatever that is, is a huge reason for you to not only achieve your dreams, but also a big reason why all that's totality, why you should become a first generation cash flow millionaire. A couple of videos for you to watch before I let you go. Number one, check out this video here, the one hidden industry that can make you millions. So check out this video right here. And the second video I want you to check out is this video here, three steps 
on you making millions. Check this video out right here. So with that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your feedback, your questions. Drop them in the comments section below. That being said, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. Share this with everybody you know on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notification to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I cannot wait for you to share with me your stories about your journey towards becoming a first-generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.